gives life. He takes it away. He is the potter, and I. When I view the last sunset And across o'er the sea I know a sunrise will be waiting for me Will lose its 
invite you to stand at this moment.
friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and abuse to be with us. But what a privilege it is to take everything to God in prayer. Eternal Father, we pause at this moment, Lord, to give you thanks and praise. As we come in this funeral service, Lord, we come, Lord, not to mourn, but to give you thanks for the life of Brother David. Lord, he's not here today, but we know, dear God, that he was living to prepare himself for this day. And Father, we pray, dear God, that as we meet to celebrate his life and to give you thanks, we pray that everything be done according to your will. Lord, I want to put the family here, here to survey this morning especially. We ask that you anoint her, dear God, for the crown of her head and help her to continue to be faithful to you so that one day she will meet for the baby again. We want to put the rest of family member, Lord, in your hand this morning. And we ask that those who have not known you as personal Lord and Savior, that today they will not leave here without saying to themselves, Lord, I deliver myself in your hand. We ask now, Lord, that everything that will be taking place today, it will be done according to your will, as we give you thanks in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
And I ask that at this Thanksgiving service that your words are kind and timely. Are you with me? This is not the place to come and express your dissatisfaction. This is church. Are you with me? And so if you come to express your dissatisfaction, I will advise and let you know that you are at the wrong place and on the wrong podium, using the wrong mic. Are we clear? Yes. Let me also help you to understand that if you would like to use the restroom, then you make your way to my right, which is your left, you exit the building and the restroom is the building that you will see as soon as you exit the main church building. With all of this behind us, we will now move to our first lesson, Job 14, 12 to 15, followed by a special song, and the second lesson, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. We invite these individuals at this time to make their way A. Garvis, C. Thompson, and I. Ains to now participate in this program. Thank you. Oh 
concerning them which are asleep, that he sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from the heavens with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Eighteen and last. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. That restroom that I tell you about, that is not modern. And, you know, you will think that you are comfortable there. And only when you look <laughs> is for the baby. But over time, he was so robust and strong that he inherited a name among the young people. And the name he inherited came from a time in Jamaica when there were two gentlemen that stood out firm. But Brother Bailey likes a particular color. Not what is on his casket. It has to be right. That's what I'll leave it. And so as young people in the church, we call him Zeke. <laughs> so whenever you are hiding in the church, and you see seats coming. You have to move. I would feel that's rather daily. And so I believe the nine persons who are selected are groups to share in this tribute. These tributes will share different aspects of how he has touched their lives. And so we look forward now with the Martins Seventh-day Adventist Church, his son-in-law, Brother Carlton Barrow, sister, Sister Dave Garvis, and then we will break at Sister Karen McDonald Clark Church family, and then I will rejoin you there. And invite the four persons to come forward in the order printed in the program. Put your hands together and welcome them. Praise the Lord, Church. Praise the Lord. It's a pleasure to be here to celebrate the life of Brother Bailey. Brother Bailey was very dear to all of us. In the tempestry of life, there are prayers that shines brighter than the rest, leaving stories of inspiration and leaving an indelible mark on our hearts. As we embrace, as we embark on the heartfelt journey, our pens become vessels of remembrance, and our words of short tribute to a great person who has left a prevailing void in our lives. In the quiet space between memories and the echoes of laughter, we pay homage to an individual whose legacy transcends the boundaries of time. We gather here today with heavy hearts to pay tribute to an extraordinary beloved member of our church family, the late brother Kenneth Bailey, who served faithfully as a deacon and a church soldier for many years. Recently, a video expert who uses phone call at, at, as an alarm to notify members that it is wake up time for us not to be late for worship. 
or just to share a word of comfort or cheer. As we come to celebrate his life, let us find solace in the knowledge that his legacy of dedication, love, and service will forever live in our hearts. So as we reflect on Brother Bailey, 37 years of service to the Barton Seventh-day Adventists, we are reminded of a man whose life embodied the teaching of Christ. He faithfully carried out his duty as a deacon and a church soldier, serving with humility, compassion, and unwavering dedication. So his selfless, selfless act of kindness and his commitment to the well-being of our church community has left a lasting effect on all of us. Amen, church? Amen. Beyond his role within the church wall, Deacon Bailey was a pillar of strength and support to his church family. He was always there to offer comforting embrace or a helping hand to those in need. His genuine care and concern for others knew no bounds, and his legacy of love will continue to inspire us all for years to come. Amen? Amen. Though we mourn the lost of Deacon Bailey, let us also celebrate the beautiful life he lived and the countless life he touched along the way. Let us take comfort in knowing that his memory will forever live on in the hearts of those who were fortunate enough to call him friend, brother, daddy, and mentor. So as we bid farewell to our deacon Bailey, let us honor his memory by continuing to live out the value he held there, love. He was affectionate to everyone, kindness, always giving to members of the church and the community at large. Can you want this? Getting your bananas, your coconuts, orange, and evil cash. <laughs> also, a firm faith. We can go back in time when discipline was his order of command. No boy, no girl could be out of church when service was in session. And he would take no talk. He was indeed the general, aka peace. So many, so may his legacy serve as a guiding light for us all as we strive to follow in the footstep, in his footstep, and carry on the work he began. So, brothers and sisters, friends and loved ones, we are only a short time here. You can see that today. So let us, let us all get ready. Let us all stay ready. And let us be ready to meet our Lord and Savior. I thank you. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. It is with um, mixed emotion. And I am here, and I know we are all here. We miss Brother Bailey. For me personally, my truth is in song, but I have to say something when I cheer. For me personally, Brother Bailey was a cool guy. We would have times when we breathe together. And trust me, Brother Bailey would make you laugh. You said, Brother Bailey, you know, easy. Brother Bailey went to fight. And then we would talk about the foreign lifestyle, and like you would want to get a visa. And Head straight to far to enjoy the life. You know, whatever time I go to a funeral service, I always look at the time of birth, the time of death. Reason being, it has given unto one three score. But by reason of strength, daily four score. And I can see that Brother Bailey is a strong man. He hit the nail right on the head. Wonderful. You know, I'm just here to 
chill the family members, including myself, just keep courage and Brother Bailey was a fighter. So let us just continue the fight and do what we can. God is life and he takes it away. He's the potter, and we are the clay. When I view the last sunset and cross o'er the sea, I know a sunrise will be waiting for me.
Every day he would ring, no, correction, he would video call me. He would say, he would call me and my brother, Nikki, every day. He would ring to always check on me and say, what well, am I? I can't hear from you. Then he would go on to ask about brother Nikki if he couldn't get through to him. Our call started from 3 a.m. in the morning, your time. So, like 8 o'clock, he's ringing me. And I said to him, bro, aren't you tired? Do you see? He would say to me, but just wait my only why your advice. I know now, when he finished talking to us, me and my brother, he would say to mama, he's going to pray for the family over the London seas and all in Jamaica and America. We bonded when I was in my teens. Our dad visited Jamaica. When he got back, he told me and my brother Nicky, we have an older brother and his name is Robert. I was excited as I always wanted to write to someone in Jamaica. <laughs> I got my wish. I always kept, no, no, where am I? Okay. I got my wish. I always kept putting, putting off my visits for years. Our cousin Diane, RIP, would visit Jamaica very frequently. And every time she came back, she would say, your brother said time to meet my sister. The time eventually came when we met. That day was so emotional. We hugged and cried. Since then, we have been tighter. We grew a sibling bond. The younger years, we had missed out on did not matter. We had memories, and the memories we all had together will live on forever. As my brother would say to me when we finished our phone video call conversation, one love. One heart, one destiny, our way. When, when Robert finished speaking, he said, my sister, you know God loves you, but I love you best. Then I would say again, one love. And we used to do this thing, because it's a video. One love, one heart, one destiny. Um, Good. Then he would blow kisses. So now my brother, I say bye bye. Keep watching over my beautiful family, especially my sister in law, Agatha Bailey. She's the most amazing, beautiful sister in law you could ever have. Her children are just like, I can't explain, but my nieces and my nephews, they are the most beautiful, amazing. Family ever. Thank you for looking after my brother to the bitter end. His grandchildren, you are all the best. And great grandchildren. I will miss him so much, the love that we had, but God knows best. He took him as his work here was done. Fly high until we meet again, Brother Robert. So, Coming up from that, I have a little poem that I would like to say. I missed you so much, Robert. You taught us how to live, and your memory teaches us how to remember. Robert, you loved us conditionally. Now it's our turn to carry this love forward with your memories as guidance. My brother, even though you're not here anymore in this world, you will always be in my heart. Um, and before I come up here, I would like everyone to give a round of applause to my family. Well, I would just like to say I'm very happy Thank you for coming. The support is amazing. And I do have something to say, but I, I think I won't make it. But, you know, thank you.
to remind family members that though difficult it is in Jesus name we can press on. When the valleys deep when the mountain Oh, I see. 
Nadia of the Board of Governor, principal, teachers, and other members of the Blue Primary and Infant School, we gather here today to honor and pay tribute to a remarkable man who has left an indelible mark on our parents and student life. Though we cannot begin to comprehend the depths of your pain, we can offer our unwavering support and love during this time. <clears throat> Even the strongest of the hearts can break because pain doesn't care if it is a strong heart or a weak heart. It makes everyone cry. As you navigate this profound loss, may you find strength and peace in the love and memories you share with you. Mrs. Beans and Javin, we want you to know we are here for you, offering our shoulders to lean on and our cares to listen. Be not dismayed. The Lord promises to comfort those who mourn. May the God of heaven wrap his arms around you and your family at this time.
Now what 
we usually do well as children was just stick to Brother Baby. Because you know, once you stick to Brother Bailey, he will squeeze a king to your side. Are you with me? Yes. So I understand why some of you are sad. You don't know if you're not going to get any more tea. I don't know if you're going to get any more banana. I don't know if you're going to get any more beer. But listen, 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 folks. Listen, you can cheer up. I am the estate director. <laughs> and Ella Chambers is the resource distribution director. So, so anytime Sister Daly, I shall not take this sometimes with Joe. I'm sure now what is the tendency to roll our eyes away. You just call the other chambers and myself and we will deal with the rest. I notice the, and I hope folks that we really pray for you because while Sean and Jason and the others live out, uh, Jerome is the one that is in. And he decides that as much as he can run to the bush and stay far from the service, he can overcome. We're asking to pray for him that when the reality really reach home, he is able to cope. We will move into the remembrance. We have two segments. One on behalf of the grandchildren, which will be done by Kayla Burrell, and the other on behalf of the children. And I hope that there is a deputy spokesperson this afternoon. Because while I see they printing the program by mistake, Sean and Bailey, I hope that they have somebody else to, to do it. But here what happens. So we have Akela Borrell and Sean Bailey, Brother Bailey Purse. <laughs> and they will come and share this afternoon in the remembrance on behalf of their grandfather and father. Akela, followed by. Robert Bailey, my grandfather, was a man of God, a family man, and a man who was always fashionable, especially when going to church in his three-piece suit. Remembering the fond memories with him from a baby until I migrated to the States gives me joy to know that I got to experience such a wonderful upbringing. We are blessed to have had you a part of our lives. The majority of me and my cousin's summer holidays were spent with our grandparents. We would have our Friday prayer meeting with grandfather always dozing off. When it comes to Saturday for church, he would always make sure of the same side. Christmas was my favorite with my pot roast chicken grandfather would do. And anybody who know tea, know tea love our baby. <laughs> with the tree eggs, <laughs> I would cry for crackers because I could not pronounce the word crackers at that time. <laughs> I loved his green plantings when crushed and fried with salt. And would complain if my mother couldn't do it like how he could when I went back home. <laughs> and one thing with my grandfather, every day he went to the bush, he come back with something for us to share. Whether it's a tangerine, pizza cane, or a walk and pick up knees berry. <laughs> but my family, although it is difficult to see beyond the sorrow, May looking back in memory help comfort us tomorrow. Rest well, my grandfather. Good afternoon again, everyone. Good 
This is the remembrance of the late Robert Kenneth Bailey. Grandfather was a loving, caring person who always thought of others. He was the only grandfather that I grew up knowing, which caused me to love him like no other. I recall the times when we had devotion on Friday nights when he would pray for his family while not leaving out his church members in the process. If he is not praying, he would be sleeping. Before we would begin the devotion, I would ask Grandma, if we wake him up? Grandma would say no and move towards where he was sleeping to conduct the devotion. You would think he would wake up from the singing and talking, but instead, any time Grandma would read a passage from her quarterly or from the bed, he would groan in agreement to whatever she read. <laughs> Grandfather was a family man. He loved all his children and grandchildren. Sometimes I wonder if Jenny was his favorite, <laughs> just from the way he treated him. Ever since he was a baby, he would spoil him. He would have him at the dinner table in his lap feeding him. Mind you, Jenny didn't even have teeth yet. One time, he had sneaked into Papa's room and took out his coins, but Papa caught him and gave him such a scolding that he had to put them back. Whether it may be morning, noon, or night, he would be talking on the phone with one of his siblings or family members abroad. Because of this, he would ask them to send him credit so he could always talk. When he would ask me to fix a problem on his phone, I would sometimes check his credit balance out of curiosity just to be shocked by the amount that he had. Anytime I had his phone, my aunt would somehow always be nearby to take off credit from his phone. Mrs. Binks. I had no luck though because he used digital and I had lied, presenting on a slow. When it was dinner time and he would get his plate, it sometimes didn't have a fork and I had to get one for him. When I would give him one, he would say, No man, not that one day. Come to find out, he used a specific fork to eat. When we would have birthday celebrations, he was the one who would pray for the celebrants. During the celebration, we would have music playing and everybody was dancing and having a good time. At times, he would sit and just rock his body to the music, but one time, he decided to join. Out of nowhere, I saw grandfather stand up with such a speed, I was surprised he was not busy and just started dancing aggressively. I was shocked by his moves, saying to myself, yes man, you still have it. <laughs> Those memories I hold to me dearly, down to the moment he was in the hospital. When I went to visit him, I was greeted with a smile as bright as the sun. I was thrilled to see that he had a positive attitude, despite his worsened condition. Homemade dinner was always bought for him. After he had ate, he said he was feeling for a little snack. So my aunt decided to give him a greater cake that had green in it. When it was handed it to him, he said, you know we don't want nothing with that color day. <laughs> Most of us here should know why he did that. Want it. That was not going to that. I had to stand there and scrape off all the green dye off it. In the end, he did not take it, so at all, I don't did that for nothing. He did that easy. So, we all talked and laughed with him like we had no care in the world. The next day, however, was not the same. When we arrived that day, I was greeted with a face filled with pain and discomfort. He had slid down during the short space of time. The state I had saw him in caused me to break down. In the midst of all the weeping, my mother whispered to me, I don't we can't have a bad son. So at this stage, that just made the tears go harder. I didn't want to leave him, fearful of what would happen. On the night of December 19th, he passed away. However, I didn't hear the news until the 20th. My mother kept it from me, claiming that I would have been uneasy. The night he passed, I had actually been at home, praying to God that he spring one more day. 
It's sad that he left us, but God knows that it was his time. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of our broken hearts, and save them as we of our contrary spirit. Robert Bailey, he will forever be in our hearts. Mais non, 
the last birthday. Son. Marvin, my husband, he became a son, not a son-in-law. He loved them as how he loved us his own. Mommy took in a lot of adopted children. I don't know if Nanika is here yet or me. And let me tell you about kindness. Mommy don't mark it and care who pick me. True. Somebody will say me can't but they will say give him and he care him. And daddy has never once tell her to come out with them or what we ever eat. He just provided for everybody. Carton, thank you. Marvin, thank you. You both have been a tower of strength to us siblings. When our brothers broke down, when we thought they would hold us up, you both did. And I want to say thank you. Thank you, Uncle Marvin. Thank you, Uncle Alex, for being the brother. Thank you, Aunt Mary. Thank you all for me. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you, grandchildren. You did well. Put your hands together for them. Donna, you did well. The next item is you, but we will take the offer. And then we come back around. So at this time, we're going, going to lift an offering in aid of the church outreach ministry. We're going to ask that the deacons now um, prepare the, their cell for the lifting of the offering this afternoon. I'm going to invite you to bow your heads with me as we pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we give you thanks for the offering that will be lifted at this time. We ask that you will pronounce your blessing upon its use, and those who give this afternoon, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. During the singing of the off, during the collecting of the offering, we will sing the hymn, "The Lord's My Shepherd, I'll Not Want." The Lord's my shepherd, I always want He makes me down to die In pastures green, in me and green The water waters, my question of healing He makes me 
Amen. 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 If you're happy, you know, let me hear you say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you're happy that God has been good to you, let me hear you say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are you happy to be blessed in this Thanksgiving service so far? Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to have now a floral tribute to be led by Sister Bailey Bins, his daughter, followed by a tribute by G and O Sims Funeral Home. So we begin with the floral tribute, which will be led by Sister Shorna Daly.
even though this feels like a stand up comedy, I know that later on today you guys are going to be in tears. But through it all, I want you to know that God never feels. He will never feel you.
There is only one future blessed hope we have is that the dead in Christ will come again. Are you with me? And so those of us who are alive and well must so get our lives in line so that on that blessed day when Jesus himself will come to give every man according as his work shall be. You know, the Bible says you must give and you will receive. Are you with me? And in, you know, I've come to learn that in the progression of life, that God intervenes in some unique ways. And he uses people whom you least expected at the least expected time. So while Brother Bailey was in the hospital, away from his family, away from his, his church family, away from his community, you just imagine you are lying in an hospital and you, you can't help yourself. And in to your right is someone sick and to your left is someone sick. And if you ease up and look, it is someone sick. But there in the hospital, where Brother Bailey lies, there was a brother, Pastor Williams, Pastor Ruth, who stood out above all the patients that were in that war. He was Brother Bailey's neighbor in the hospital. He became his son. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to introduce to you this afternoon a son that you may not have known Brother Bailey had, but one whom he has acquired while he was in the hospital. He has come this afternoon to share in this afternoon's Thanksgiving service. His name is Oliver. Oliver, please stand. Be acknowledged by the church community and the various family. We thank you for your extended service in the hospital as you extended to our dear brother. We the family had asked Oliver that you share the two words if it's your desire. Ladies and gentlemen, not in the program, but his service is exceptional. He deserves a moment to hear his voice. Yes, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is sad to be here because I understand where I got you. And the pain we have got you, him can't sleep, so me can't sleep. Me sick and him sick. But my sickness, yes, one day I'll end up just like him. But we don't use that and use that and judge him. He help me in many ways I can because pain is not nice. And enough time call the nurse, nobody can pay him no money. Enough time call the porter, nobody can pay him no money. I am an oxygen agent, so now I will stop my oxygen to go and help him. In evening tea, nobody can help him. Me and I made the tea for him. I make it how he wants it to him as a bottle good and tell him, say, Brother, you yeah, have a son now, you're going to be like just like my wife. You make it just like my wife. And you make it just like my daughter. <laughs> but if you be amongst him, I learn a lot, and I'm a caring person. So I, don't, I learned not to live for myself alone. So even though I didn't plan to come here because I thought it was next week, it just a sudden call me get, and I have to run from town, come to me here, and I'm you know, up here. So. But I'm glad I'm sure, I'm going to promise him, I'm going to be there for him, and I always fulfill my promise. Ladies and gentlemen, Oliver. You know, I think earlier I heard Sean has said that Brother Bailey's mantra is do not give what you don't want. That's a clear example of what is called sacrificial giving. And if you notice what Oliver said, he sometimes had to do what? Stop 
is oxygen to assist Brother David. So he gave sacrificially. And when the time had come, he received that which in his life he had been given. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Brother David's life and the example of Oliver. And when we pray, remember Oliver. He is sick. He's sick, but yet we thank you. And so we move now to Mr. Nervous. Mr. Jason Bailey and Charmian Smith, son and daughter-in-law, as they now come and share in the eulogy. When they are through, Pastor Everett Rowe will lead us through the remaining of the program, followed by Elder Bentley Chambers. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Pastor, members of the congregation, family and friends, well wishes I greet you. On behalf of David's family, I would first like to express our sincere gratitude and appreciation to everyone for their love, kind words, and gestures over the past weeks. We are truly grateful as you have helped us through this difficult time. We are gathered here today to celebrate the life of the late Robert Kenneth Bailey, affectionately called Daddy, Mars Robert, Mr. Bailey, Zeke's, Papa, Pops, Grandfather, whose journey was long and a fulfilling one. His journey began at Birkin Watermount in St. Catherine during the summer of 1943. It was on the 24th day of July, his late parents, Ernest Sylvester Bailey and William Taylor, welcomed their first child into the world. He was the only biological child for his mother and the eldest of three children for his dad. The ten years of his childhood were spent with his mother in Watermount before she journeyed to Springfield, St. Louis in St. Catherine, where she settled with her new husband. <laughs> The years rolled by and Daddy learned that his father was residing in Woodall to stop the road from here. At this time he was about 14, 14 years old when he decided to run away from his, his mother and stepfather. The story is told that his mom came from, for him in Woodall and took him back to her home. But Daddy was a free-spirited boy. He would run back to his dad and his stepmother repeatedly. He eventually settled in Woodall. At that time he had no siblings. So he and his cousin, Uncle Alec Britton, <laughs> they formed an inseparable bond. Right? They grew up together. He had no many time, so he went to form a bond with his, his, his closest and favorite cousin. His educational journey started at Watermont Elementary School, now the Watermont Primary. He was well behaved, so well behaved child, who was a child time, so that he did not have to endure the punishment of his teachers. After settling in Woodall, he started to work with his dad, who operated a stud farm. He eventually left for the city after his father and stepmother migrated to England. In the 1970s, while he was in the city, he operated a maintenance restaurant on Lidemus Grave Road. As a free spirited individual, he would travel the island at a moment's notice. With his best friend, Neville Forrest, also known as Mr. Blows. During his travels, they would take up construction, construction jobs as they were respectively skilled masons and carpenters. When these jobs are completed, they would always return to Kingston and make surprise visits to check on his father's property in Woodall. Property had a lot of coffee, and so he would visit seasonally to have the coffee taken care of. He would employ people from the community to pick the coffee beans so he could supply the coffee factory. In the summer of 1982, during the peak of the coffee season, that he sent out an invitation for people to start reaping the start reaping process. Specifically, he wanted somebody to handle all the business of the property. At that time, my mother had just left her home in Spanish home to take care of her sick grandfather who was residing in Woodall. She and my elder, older siblings, sorry, my older siblings, were new to the community 
and being a single mother, she needed the job. Her aunt introduced her to Daddy, and she got the job. Daddy was a good boss and naturally a kind person. The story, this story tells of a conversation my mother was having with her aunt about not sending her kids to their new school until she was paid the following week. Daddy overheard the conversation, went and got supplies for the kids and presented them to her. Naturally, my mother refused the items. And he was quick to tell her the items were not for her but for the children. And if you know my father, you will hear him say, I don't feel them. I feel the them. <laughs> he became fond of my mother, and, but she was not an easy nut to crack. So he befriended the children. <laughs> he would often take supplies from the shop in Kingston while my mother was at the market. One evening, she came home and saw him at the house. She inquired why he was there and told him to leave. It was at that time the children came and told her he was always around and he was their friend. His love for children became the base ingredient for the start of their relationship. I'm not going to give you other details. Cut out some. <laughs> he invited her and the children to stay at his house and soon thereafter he introduced her to his mother. Mummy was always going to church so she invited him. Shortly after they both got baptized, soon in the 80s. Right? They solidified their love as it is written in the scriptures. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall become one flesh. So in March of 1987 they tied the knot and the union bore three additional children, a total of seven children to the family. As their love grew stronger, so did, so did they endure many successes and challenges of the family. They trusted God and were able to, re, to be resilient and rise above adversities while building a stable and home environment for the family. The bond of family meant everything to daddy. With his God given appointment to be the head of the home, and that by the sweat of your brow you shall eat bread. He spent most of his remaining years working as a mason and a, and a farmer, building and repairing houses and tilling the soil to provide for his family. That he taught us the importance of kindness, as Sean pointed out earlier. And with, his, with the support of his wife, how to live a life, a life that is pleasing to God, have good manners, and encourage us to do our best in school, work, in school and to work hard at achieving our goals. He was a firm believer in education, even though his educational journey was cut short. Daddy was an outstanding father. His culinary skills were extraordinary, as he often prepared tasty meals at family gatherings. He looked forward to birthday celebrations and family fun days with his children, grandchildren, extended family, friends, as it was always a good vibe when we gathered. Late 2016, he started to experience health issues. He went overseas for medical treatment, which he responded to favorably. After COVID hit in 2019, he developed lung issues, not to be an accident. That he was a real soldier, toughest man. Toughest man I know, he would never complain about how he was feeling, even though he was sick. He was always smiling and having a fun during his adversities. He marched on through the years like a soldier. Yes, yes. Marched on. On Monday, December 11th, 2023, on the recommendation of his own doctor, Dr. Singh, he went to the Native Hospital for more, for more robust treatment. As the treatment he was receiving at home was not sufficient, he was then admitted. He always looked forward to his family visits, knowing that Sean would <laughs> always sneak in his KFC. 
you will tell the nurses not to tie him as his wife will do it when she comes. You will often tell mommy not to go outside and cry and that she should not worry about anything. My daddy was in the hospital. We were all worried about leaving him alone as it was always us together. But God provided a son to take care of him in our absence. Alva, son. Alva would answer his phone and take messages as daddy was unable to handle the phone. Alva would take all the information from the doctors and nurses and relay them to us when we arrived. He spent nine days in the hospital. On Tuesday, December, 20, December 19, 2023, we all gathered at his bedside during the evening visit. He laid there peacefully with his eyes closed, a shot of his hand, teeny lotion on his feet, and I whispered in his ear, in his ear that he reach and he acknowledged us. Yeah. Mommy rubbed his head and he opened his eyes and acknowledged his wife's touch. We fixed him in a more comfortable position to which he approved. He then started to sleep. We left, but the doctors called us back for his possessions. He fought a good fight. Yes, sir. He had fought a good fight. He ran the race. He kept the faith, but no, the journey has ended. Daddy's legacy will live on through the lives of all he leaves behind. Is the loving way. Children, Angeline. Ian, Yvette, Jason, Shauna, and Jerome. Sons-in-law, daughters-in-law, brother, and sisters. Twelve grandchildren and three great-grandchildren and adopted children. Nieces and nephews, cousins, other family members, friends, and well-wishers. May his memory live on in our lives. Sleep on, Daddy. Sleep and take your rest.
Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. We are grateful to be here to celebrate the life of Brother Bailey. We know that this is a sad time for the Bailey's family. But judging from the tributes, the remembrance, and all the beautiful things that were said, it is obvious that Brother Bailey would have touched our lives significantly. So we ought to learn something from Brother Bailey's life. We ought to ensure that we make preparation just as a did. This afternoon, on behalf of my family and the church family, we want to express our deepest sympathies. We know this is a sad time, a difficult time, but take comfort in the assurance that Brother Bailey made adequate preparation. Amen? So this afternoon, I want to say thanks to Pastor Rowe and his family for being here. And thank you, Pastor Rowe, for the introductory remark. And I will be moving right into the Word. And the Bible says in Daniel chapter 5, the Bible says, Belshazzar, the king made a feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the kings and his princes, his wives and his concubines might drink their ink. Then he brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines drank in them. And they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver and of brass and of iron, of wood and of stone. And in the same hour came forth the fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. In verse 6, that the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, and so that his joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees smote one against the other. Brothers and sisters, for the next few minutes, permit me to speak under the theme, have you made preparation? Let us pray. Eternal Father and our God, today the important question is, have we made preparation. Lord, I pray that each of us will turn the search light within our hearts, that we will make the necessary adjustments to our lives before it is eternally too late. And we say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Daniel chapter 5, 1 through to 6 gives us the story of a young and a powerful king by the name of Belshazzar. And the Bible says 
that he made a feast for his lords, a thousand of his lords. Belshazzar called his wives, he called his concubines, he called all his sweethearts, and they were happy and jolly good time. And the Bible says that as they tasted the wine, they began to become intoxicated. And while they were intoxicated, they called for the golden vessels. They called my brothers and sisters for his wives and his entourage. And they drank wine, my brothers and sisters. And the Bible says that they praised the God of gold. They praised the God of silver. They praised the God of brass. They praised the God of iron. They praised the God of wood. They praised the God of stone. The Bible says, Belshazzar, you saw what happened to your grandfather. But Belshazzar, my brothers and sisters, like many of us, we are distracted by what is happening in the world. Many of us, uh, we are more concerned uh, about having uh, girls in a bond. Many of us, uh, we are more concerned uh, about partying. Uh, we are more concerned uh, about having a jolly good time. Uh, Belshazzar, uh, like many of us, uh, fail to make adequate preparations. The reality is, Belshazzar, failed to make preparation before his death. Belshazzar was distracted by many things. And today we see the same mentality. Many men are distracted by the things of this world. Many women are distracted by keeping up with what is in but I'm dropped by here to remind somebody uh, that God wants us uh, to focus our attention. Uh, it might very well be uh, that God permitted uh, for a baby to die uh, so that we could be in church, uh, so that we can look at our own life. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, I've come to recognize that sometimes God does some crazy stuff to get our attention. Sometimes God allows us to go through some storms. Sometimes God allows us to lose a loved one. when Belshazzar called all the men to interpret the writing on the wall, the Bible said that they could not interpret the writing. Last of all, he summoned for Daniel. And I'm happy that God always has a man. God always has a woman. God Work. And when Daniel came in, Daniel rehearsed to him the story of Nebuchadnezzar, his grandfather. Daniel reminded him of how Nebuchadnezzar was a proud and arrogant man. And my brothers and sisters, Daniel reiterated that his heart was lifted up and God turned him into a maniac. Sometimes God does some crazy things to get our attention. 
don't tell me that you have time. None of us knows our expiration date. None of us can predict how we will die. But you and I can make preparation. And so God is saying to us today, before you die, see the Lord. Because the reality is, whether we're ready or not, Jesus is coming again. Whether we want it or not, Jesus is coming again. Oh. Know that they shall die. But the righteous have hope in his death. I hear the psalmist say, Precious in the sight of God is the death of his saints. We need to make preparation. It is silly, it is stupid. To know that we are going to die and fail to make adequate preparation. But the good thing today is that those who are wise, those who would have picked up their cross and have decided to go all the way with Jesus, death would not have the final word. You see, my brothers and sisters, the reality is we live in a sin-cursed earth. We know that good and bad people die. Rich and poor people die. White and black people die. Seventh-day Adventists and Baptists die. Christians and non-Christians die. But the, the
the arrows. And with a mighty triumph, war swoons. He arose, victor from the dark domain. And he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose. Brothers and sisters, the reality is whether we want it or not, whether we want to believe it or not, God is saying today, the ball is in your court. Choose to be on God's side. Choose to make adequate preparation. We know not when. We know not how. But I want to reassure us that if we die in the Lord, it would have been there with our souls. God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Pastor Ron, for your words of hope and your words of encouragement, reminding us so well that because Brother Bale would have died in faith, we live on our knees a blessed resurrection. Thank you very much. I trust that we were truly encouraged. While I give the family members time to get in so that we can pray for the family, I just quickly give you the instructions. And I hope that we will keep the heart that we have been keeping thus far. Um, ever too often, we have funerals and the officiating part of reaching almost last to the place of burial. So, Maxwell, please let us follow the instruction. So, the officiating part will go first. After, they, after we do the part for the brief family, then we shall sing the recessional hymn. But now, so please to keep your seat. For a baby was an orderly, dignified man. No car racing. Officiated party will go first. Earth will fall in. I implore you to so please keep your seat. It's, it's irreverent for you to walk out in a park and join a sermon. So we ask the family members to just come forward at this time. We're going to just, just chant the legal spiritual, come by here, my Lord, come by here. Family members just stand. Everybody just stand. Family members, please just follow the around the front here. Just follow the around the front, grace is available. And let us petition the grace of God and the throne of God. And there we are. Where is this available? Kayla, let's start this available down, please. Come by here, my Lord. God, please stand. Family members gather closer to the front.
But Lord, we are only humans. And sometimes humans forget. And sometimes, Lord, we, we grow doubtful. And we get anxious, Lord. And so today we pray that you will be present with us in, in, a, in a very special way. We pray that you will touch Sister Baby. She has been showing strength, but Lord, none of us know what is happening inside. Because tonight she shall go to bed without an husband, Lord. Tomorrow she shall cook without with one plate short. Lord Jesus, you touch her. Be the man in her life, we pray. Be your companion, be your provider, be your source of strength, dear Jesus. Touch for the baby and grant her, dear Lord, the strength to survive these dark and gloomy days. Touch her, Lord. Give her miraculous faith. Such as like Job, Lord, and all around her is shaking. She will stand on you the solid rock. Let me pray that you will be with Brother Bailey's children. Lord, be with Angie. Be with Ian, loving Lord. Be with Yvette. Be with Jason. Be with Sean and be with Tilly. Lord, you be their father. You be their source of strength. You be their protector. You be their shield, Lord. You be their butler. You be their provider of in Jesus. No matter what, Lord, keep them faithful. Lord, may they recognize that if they want to see Brother Bailey again, they must make their call in an election sure. Lord, supply their needs according to your riches in glory. Lord, we put Tina before in a special way because we know that he's, a, he's hurting in a sort of special way. We don't, we don't understand. But Lord Jesus, we pray that you will, you will surround him with your loving arms, Lord, and you will give him strength. Lord, we pray for all the daughters-in-laws and we pray for Marvin and we pray for for Carlton and we pray for all the grandchildren, Alex and Kayla and Shante. Lord, we pray for, for, for Shani. We pray that you'll be with all of them. We pray for his loving sister and his brother and all of the siblings that I may not know. Lord Jesus, we beg that you'll be present in their lives in a, in a very special and effective way we pray. Lord, touch this family and grant them that peace which passes all understanding. In their time of darkness, Lord, grant light. Lord, in their time of sorrow, grant peace. In their time of grief, loving Jesus, grant joy. And when they don't understand loving Jesus, may they, may they trust your heart. Know that everything that you have done is well done. Be with the church, Lord, that is grieving at this time. Be with our grieving community. All the extended family members and grandchildren, you be with us all. Lord, Lord, we know that you have promised that my peace I leave with you. Not as this world give I give I you. Therefore, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. May we find that peace today, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we pray that you be with Oliver. Lord, he was the secretary and the right hand and the receptionist in the hospital. Lord, leave him not comfort. Thank you. We pray, Lord, that you will touch his sickness and touch his ailments and touch his diseases. And we ask, Lord, that you will come down right now with healing in your wings and you will grant Oliver deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever it is, Lord, you know, where you are a great physician and our family today, bring the healing and deliverance and victory even today. Over everything, Lord, we pray that today, today, he will make that decision to walk with you fully. Lord Jesus, help all of us. In the, may we use sleep, dear Lord, to mark death. Jesus, we know that the signs are fast fulfilling. And soon you will break the eastern skies to come for your children. May none of us hear, Lord, in the hearing of my voice. The lost when you shall come. But keep us faithful. Faithful until the time when there will be no more death. No more sorrow. No more wreath. No more casket. No more graveside. No more mourning. No more grieving. Keep us faithful until then. When they shall come there, Jesus. We 
may we find a place in the return of kingdom. Rolled away, I hear the 
of mercy. Let me add the throne of mercy. Find a sweet relief. Find a sweet relief. Kneel in very deep contrition. Kneel in very deep contrition. Help my unbelief. And help my unbelief. Everybody know that I sing the chorus together. Savior, Savior, our Lord, hear my humble, hear my humble cry, while another is calling to the past we trust in only in thy merit, trust in only in thy merit. When I see thy face. this life and I'm left to mourn his lovely wife, his children, grandchildren, siblings, other family members. Lord, we know that their pain is real and intense, but we know that you are the great comforter. We pray that you will be with them every day, every night. We know that the days ahead will be quite challenging, but oh God, we know that you are well able to keep them. And so we place them under your care and in your charge. Bless all those who have come to give their support. Help us, Lord, to remember the words that have been shared with us this afternoon, that our lives are precious in your sight, and we ought to live yeah, yeah. praising and glorifying your name. Bless us now, we pray, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we shall see it afar. Please let us join our voices. Let us join our voices. There's a land that is fairer than day. All right, let us go now. There's a land that is fairer than day. There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith we shall see it afar. There's a land that is fairer than day. Come on, 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 come on,
Oh, my God. 
this time we will, we will have the acknowledgement and then the final closing prayer. So the family of the late Robert Kenneth Daly would like to express sincere appreciation and thanks to their relatives, friends, and well-wishers for their comforting expression of love and support extended to them during this time of bereavement. Please bow your heads as we will pray. Great God and our Father, we thank you for how the day turned out. We thank you for having no brother daily to us for 80 years. I pray, Heavenly Father, that we will all learn some Let you save trip home, everybody. Thank you. Uh, refreshment to serve all those who are flying home this week, next week. Have a safe flight, also. Thank you for the workmen who work so efficiently and able able today. Thank you very much. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep Welcome you. Pastor. Have a wonderful rest of the day.